we're going to move into the last segment for the day. We're going to spend 10, 15 minutes on kernel processing. And we've got Tom and Duke from our Hand Ball store. And we've got Don Dross, who's our self propelled forage harvester expert from John Deere. So take it away, guys. So we're going to talk a little bit about kernel processing and how do we know what a good kernel processing is. Uh, a couple things we need to know. What our KP score is. Uh, KP score, we kind of talked about it earlier. It's just a measure of how well the kernel processor is breaking it up. Theoretical length of cut, it's more setting for your theoretical length of cut coming in. When you change it in the cab through your IV lock transmission, you're not actually speeding up and slowing down your cutter head. What you're doing is you're changing the speed of your feed rolls of that crop coming in. That cutter head's going to turn at the same speed no matter what. Mean particle length is going to be your average length of your corn silage. The sizing, it's shortening the material coming from the header going to the KP. We'll kind of walk through what color this is. There's two ways to determine the kernel processing. Uh, we've got the Penn State shaker box test. They've got one kind of set up in the back. If you guys don't have one, it's a good way to see it in the field. Somebody asked earlier versus waiting for your nutritionist to come back. How do you know if it's good or not? This is probably the best way to check to see how you're doing it processing. Um, second way is a bucket of water. Simple way, you're out chopping, get a five gallon bucket of water, throw a handful of silage in it. All your loose stuff's going to float to the top, your kernels are going to fall to the bottom. So if you don't have a shaker box, that's a real easy way to see what your processor is doing. So the KP score, um, kind of determining where you're at, uh, just because the corn is detented doesn't necessarily mean that it's ready to chop. So we kind of look around the milk line here, you kind of want 
4.75 millimeter across is kind of your ideal spot where we want to be chopping. Sometimes you go with milk right now, we're at three quarter, we're at half, we need to chop. But this is kind of your ideal, what we need to be at here. Yeah, guys, when you, when you talk about kernel processing, this really gives you an idea of what 4.75 millimeters looks like. We're able to break that kernel down quite a bit to achieve that score. Uh, and the reason we come up with 4.75, or not we as in John Deere, this is actually USDA, is that they took uh, fisculated cows that we were looking at earlier, where you can open up the rumen, they put a bag of corn particles into the rumen, and then they pulled it out after a certain amount of time that they thought uh, that material would pass. And 4 .7, anything smaller than 4.75 millimeters had been had disintegrated. Um, so that was a scientific analogy. Um, then they thought, okay, what's a good a good uh, a good goal to set at? And they said 50 percent, and that's more or less uh, a shot in the dark. Uh, nowadays, we're saying that 70 is what our goal should be, uh, <coughs> what we should be shooting for. Uh, and we'll, we'll get into some, uh, some more data. data on that, how we can get there. So the length of cut, you know, we kind of touch it in the cab, and we just got our ID lock transmission on the left-hand side up there. And that's controlling the speed of the feed coming in. Uh, it's adjusted by increasing or de decreasing the feed roll speed. It's not all going to be uniform. You said three quarters of an inch. Not every piece is going to be three quarters of an inch. So just kind of keep that in mind. And going back to the sizing, you know, it's the, sh it's the grinding of it. Um, you cut it up front, the processor is going to grind it up a little bit more. Because you're taking that, all that crop and you're putting it through a millimeter and a half, half mil, two mil. You're throwing through that gap, and that's going to help size it as well. Um, okay, I'll put a little more on that yeah. slide that comes up next. Okay, so this is uh, this is what we're talking about, guys. So we all adjust our length of cut setting in our cab, and we assume that what's coming out the spout is what we're adjusting it to. Now that's not necessarily the way it happens, and it, it's not just us; it's every manufacturer there is. Uh, what happens is your material is cut to your set length of cut by your cutter head. It flows into your kernel processor. And now depending on where you set your length of cut and how tight your KP gap is, you're always going to have some size. So if you go back to that previous slide, you'll start with material. Like so say this, this is your goal. This is what you're setting in your cap. You'll get some of this just because there's always going to be a little bit of error. But the more we tighten down our KP, the more we're going to size that material. And so there's always going to be a relationship there between how we set up our machine for mean particle length and our percentage of material we'll get on the top hands and how we want to do a kernel processing. Um, and so as we get into our new generations of kernel processors, we're doing work to make sure that we can get both of those uh, items that we want to get to. If we go back to the next slide again. Reduce the machine vibration. We're going to get into a couple more slides, but currently, when you're cropping, you're trying to shove 10 rows, 8 rows, whatever you got for a head on here. You're trying to shove it to a 2 millimeter gap, whatever you got to set at. With the kernel star, you've actually got more surface area where you're trying to get a crop through. Um, so, like we said, your standard KP, you're trying to push it right through here. With this, you've got 270% more working with it because you got all the valleys and you've got the tip speed. So you've got more surface area to get more crop through, which in turn will get you a little bit more ground speed. So the shaft speed, the two shafts running against each other have a 6% speed differential. But when you get to the processor itself, to the rolls, to the disc, if you will, they're concave and convex design. Um, your tip speed is a lot lower than your valley speed down here and your tip speed here. They're basically a 50% speed differential between the two. You get right in the middle is where you're going to get your best processing because you've got both rolls running at the same speed. You want to touch? Oh, no, I, that pretty much exactly covers it. So with, by having a lower uh, shaft speed differential, um, we end up saving our spout lines quite a bit, and 
just like Thomas was saying, the other benefits is, is there's actually, due to the geometry of the rolls and the fact that the tip speed is always going to be faster in the valley. And as material enters and exits, as a, as a disk configuration, there's natural acceleration to the deacceleration and reacceleration as the material enters and exits that kernel processor because it's, a, it's in contact with that material longer than it is with the standard set of rolls. So, like we're talking, it's a conve concave convex design. The basic design is, <coughs> it's, it's like you take two dishes out of your wife's cover, you put them up together, and they kind of make that UFO effect. That's basically what they look like if you take them out and stack them against each other. Um, there's two different designs, you know, you're going to have the lefts and rights, tops and bottoms. Um, each one of these discs are replaceable, <coughs> so should something happen, you run a big rock through it, you can take that one out versus replacing the whole roll like you would do on a standard kernel processor roll. Um, it increased the crushing capacity. With that more surface area, you're going to have more room to get more crop through in a shorter amount of time. There's also less possibility of plugging because you've got that more surface area. You don't have that one little gap you're trying to push everything through. So it'll increase crop flow also. In, a, in addition to this, um, a lot of you guys have probably seen the Quima processor. It looks very similar to this unit. The differences between us and Quima, uh, the main one as far as this design, is the fact that we have this concave convex design. When John Deere first tested this in Europe, what they found was yes, it can create feed, but they had they originally had that straight disc design and they ran into a lot of plugging problems. And so after a few years of testing, they came up with this concave <coughs> convex and that seemed to solve the problem. Talking about guys that are running the final processor, that's a lot of what we've seen uh, out of those processors. So that's, that's the main reason, along with uh, the items that Thomas talked about. So the direction of force, if you guys have your standard KP configuration with the rolls, your rolls are constantly bouncing against each other, pushing against each other. With the disc style KP, you got more surface area covered. It's pushing in four different directions versus up and down which in turn is going to give you a little bit less vibration in the cab, not that there was a lot, but it'll eliminate that also. Um, Curl Star, it's also great for these husk butts. You guys, especially the guys doing wheelage, you guys have probably seen these in your feet. Um, what it does is it's going to help grind that up a little bit further versus trying to shove it through two rolls. You know, it sometimes is hard enough that it'll just push through and it'll process it and break it up. With the kernel starter, it's going to be more, it's more aggressive, so it'll break it up some more. Just to be aware, the new kernel star, about 60,000 ton, is uh, the 45. We, we have a hard time saying values as far as what you should expect for disc life on these units, just because everyone's conditions are different. But as an average, we've seen anywhere between 40 and 50,000 as of last year. Now, that's only a few units. Um, and those are mainly in Texas and more of a sandy area. So I'd expect that you guys to see a little bit more than that. Um, that's pretty comparable to if you're running 32% with standard set of rolls uh, or if you're running a shredless processor. So most guys that will get you through the year. Um, I guess one other thing, you know, just to kind of keep this in mind, with the processing job, there's a lot of factors that go in. One is going to be your rolls, condition of your rolls. Uh, we do offer these guys, if you guys have got a beer job, uh, you just put these around your rolls and you can see where you're at and kind of see the conditions of your rolls. That's going to make the biggest difference on your processing job. Next thing's going to be is your ground speed. You know, your shear bar, your knives, all that stuff's going to play into it. Just to give you a kind of a theory to wrap around in your head, how many kernels are going through this in an acre? There's approximately 800 kernels in an ear of corn, give or take. You know, depending on your brand, rows, whatever. Figure two ears per stalk. We're going to go with which equals 1,600 kernels per plant. Now, we did a low population, so 20,000 plants per acre. You're at 32 billion kernels per acre. So if you see what this 
processor is doing, you know, we got to process 32 billion kernels in one acre of corn times a thousand acres of what we're trying to do. And this is trying to help increase your digestibility of your kernel and your stock as well. Yeah, and uh, j just to go over some of those options again, guys, most of you are probably having to have a 21% kernel processor in your machine right now. If you're looking to make that next step, um, probably your, your most feasible option would be 32%. Um, it's a very uh, it's very inexpensive way to improve your processing. The other items, like Thomas was saying, is that we really need to pay attention to what our role life is, because as those worlds wear, it's not as noticeable as what you think it would be. And so if you, if you, run, if you run your roles for a few years, odds are you probably should be thinking about getting a new set depending on how many acres you're putting through them. Uh, that makes the biggest difference. Other things that really help um, would be corn knives. I know it's sometimes difficult because we switch back and forth between hay and corn. But corn knives have actually been shown to make a huge improvement um, in our forage quality, especially eliminating a lot of those undesirables that we get in, in corn silos, such as husk buds and long leafy material. Um, and then if, if you're looking at going between 32% kernel start, there's a lot of advantages to both. Um, please talk with us and we'll uh, be happy to help with anything.